So the Poco F5 Pro is finally here and I've had my sim slapped inside of this remarkable mid-ranger testing it out for just over a week. The Poco F5 Pro is a solid choice for anyone after a proper premium style blower who also happens to have spunked all of their savings by accidentally buying around in any London pub. So here's my full review and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Let's start with a bit of an unboxing uh, and to do that I'll just have to momentarily stick it back inside the box. There we go. So what do you get inside the box? Well you've got yourself one Poco F5 Pro, a 67 watt fast charger which thankfully isn't an absolute brick, a Type-C USB cable and rejoice rejoice because Poco has also bundled in a condom case to keep your F5 Pro nice and safe. Not that I've been using that because I've been wanting to test how hardy this phone is. And there you have it, that's everything you get chucked in the box with the Poco F5 Pro. So now let's actually check out the phone. So let us begin with the design of the Poco F5 Pro. And I gotta say, this is probably the element of the phone that I like the least. From the front, looks like a lot of other mid-range smartphones. Reasonably chunky-ish bezels surrounding that display, but certainly not to a horrific degree. It is a completely flat display, coated in Gorilla Glass 5, and Poco has even chucked in a pre-installed screen protector. So it's actually better protected than most members of the royal family. And the Poco F5 Pro sports a pleasingly curvy finish as well. You've got rounded edges and corners. And then flip it around and it is your pretty standard plastic Poco rear end. It's not completely plain. You do have a patterned edge down both sides just to add a little bit of style. I gotta say though, the looks do let it down a bit. The Poco F5 Pro resembles a 200 pound budget phone and it's only available in black or white. No bright, poppy, crazy colors to choose from. No luminous yellow option this time around, for instance. Oh, and that glossy surface is an absolute glutton for greasy fingerprint action. So while the design isn't particularly flawed in any way, the Poco F5 Pro certainly doesn't get the old heart pumping. Not the most thrilling or exciting of designs, that's for sure. Although it is at least IP53 splash resistant, which is particularly handy as the UK appears to have ended its 10 years of endless rain period. And after a week or so of being banged about, the back end of the Poco X5 Pro has a couple of teeny wee nicks on it, but nothing too horrendous. As for the software that Poco has slapped on this thing, well, certainly Xiaomi and Poco fans should not be surprised in the slightest. It's the latest, freshest Android 13, thankfully. And slapped on top of that, as usual, you've got the MIUI 14 launcher, or MIUI 14 for Poco, as it's termed. Not that that makes much difference at all these days, to be honest. And yeah, a lot of people still dislike MIUI, but it does resemble stock Android in many ways. Now you've got the apps tray, you can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere. But you've got added bonuses like the control center, which are excellent additions. And loads of other great bonus features chucked on top of Android, like the video toolbox, which I mostly really like because it gifts you a YouTube premium feature, being able to play videos with the screen hibernating. And that pretty ruddy lovely MIUI gaming mode, which is absolutely busting with brilliant tools and features. It's not all great news though, so for instance with MIUI you tend to get less software support than you will from a Nokia or a OnePlus or a Google or a Samsung smartphone. I believe the deal here with the Poco F5 Pro is two years of Android OS updates and three years of security updates, which ain't bad, but not as good as it could be. And the Poco F5 Pro also comes stacked to the tits with my dreaded nemesis, crapware. So many apps come pre-installed on this thing that you just do not want. You have to spend bloody ages getting rid of it all. Like so Facebook, LinkedIn, AliExpress, yada, yada, yada. And oh yes, tile fun as well. Will you never die? I swear it's like Michael Piss and Myers. You eradicate it from one phone and then the very next Poco or Xiaomi you get, boom, tile fun in your face again. I have also experienced a few bugs in my week with the Poco F5 Pro. It's understandable because it's still early software. This phone hasn't actually officially launched at the time that I'm shooting this video. That said, a couple of these bugs have been a proper arse. So for instance, sometimes I'll try and stream a bit of Disney Plus or Netflix and the Poco F5 Pro will just enter an eternal state of buffering, which is obviously joyous. And I got a couple of other wee gripes as well, which I'll bang on about later. With the security, no real surprises here. You've got an in-display optical fingerprint sensor and it's absolutely fine. I've got no complaints with this. Obviously it doesn't work if your fingers are wet or you've just consumed an entire KFC bargain bucket and you're all greasy as hell. But apart from that, all good. And you do have face unlock as a backup option too. You've also got yourself a dual-sided SIM 
You know, that was really good. You've also got yourself a dual-sided SIM tray, so you can slap two SIM cards in there simultaneously, laws. No space for micro SD memory cards though, as you can see there. And both of these SIM trays support 5G. However, I have surprisingly struggled to get decent reception on the Poco F5 Pro. Even here at home, I usually get full 5G, no worries at all, but I've sometimes had to wander around my house to actually get a text message to come through. Hopefully again, this is just some weird pre-release bug that's gonna get sorted in an update. And now let's check out Poco's gorgeous 6.67 inch AMOLED display. This is definitely one of the highlights of this smartphone, an absolute stunner that frankly wouldn't be out of place on the most premium flagship Android smartphones out there right now. Because it's AMOLED tech, you get nice crisp contrast, you get natural looking colors, or you can make them super poppy if you'd prefer. It's got full Dolby Vision streaming support. And impressively as well, it's a Quad HD plus panel. It's a 3200 by 1440 pixel resolution. So whether you're checking back your photos, you're watching a movie, every frame is absolutely packed with fine detail. Visibility, not an issue either. This thing maxes out at 1400 nits. So certainly outdoors, it can counter any kind of glare. Viewing angles are perfect and everything. And the selfie cam, only a tiny wee orifice up there that barely intrudes on the action at all. The Poco F5 Pro also maxes out at 120Hz refresh. You can have it automatically scale in between 60 and 120 or set it yourself manually. It's not LTPO tech or anything though, so it can't scale all the way down to the likes of 1Hz in order to preserve battery life. And of course, like most of the mid-rangers out there these days, you've got a stereo speaker set up on the Poco F5 Pro. Let's check it out. Max out that volume. Now, as much as I absolutely adore my Steam Deck, I don't actually find I take it on that many trips with me because... I mean, look at it, it's roughly the same size as my car. It'd be almost as easy to just take my desktop rig with me. So when you pump up that volume to the maximum levels, it's not the loudest smartphone stereo experience that I've ever heard, but it's just about powerful enough so you can hear what's going on if you are kicking back with a bit of YouTube or whatever in a noisy kitchen, for instance. Just found myself occasionally leaning in a bit to hear what is going on, uh, but certainly the quality stays pretty good. It's not too tiddy when you max it out and that audio reasonably well balanced between the left and right channels. And you've also got full Dolby Atmos support with the usual graphic equalizer, plenty of presets, etc. However, as is becoming increasingly common these days, bugger all headphone jack on the Poco F5 Pro. And you've got Bluetooth 5.3 support for all your wireless streaming needs, but here I did experience another bug in my first few days with the Poco F5 Pro. Basically every time I popped my buds in my ears and started playing some music, instead of being serenaded, I had a bunch of angry electronic static spaffed right into my lug holes, which was of course highly enjoyable. Thankfully, I managed to run a Bluetooth update and touch wood ever since then, it's been absolutely fine. And full support for all the usual codecs, including a good bit of LHTC action. So now performance, and again, another highlight of the Poco F5 Pro, which has Qualcomm's almighty Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset stuffed inside. This was launched partway through mid-2022, and thankfully proved a lot less finger singy than the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It was rammed inside of all kinds of great flagship smartphones at the arse end of last year. And it's fantastic to see it in a mid-ranger like the Poco F5 Pro. As you can see, they're pretty respectable Geekbench and scores. I've certainly got no complaints with the everyday performance. Everything's nice and fluid, helped along by that 120Hz display. And certainly if you're gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact and other memory guzzling Android titles, you can expect a creamy smooth frame rate even when you ramp up those detail settings to the maximum levels. You've got a choice of 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. Mine is the 12 giga, though the 8 gig version should run absolutely smoothly as well. That flat display, perfectly responsive. The visuals absolutely stunning, of course. And you've got the liquid cool tech packed inside of the Poco F5 Pro as well, including a whopping great massive vapor chamber. So while the phone gets a little bit warm over time, certainly you can be gaming for an hour, two hours, however long you like, and you won't see any kind of throttling. And yes, you do have the aforementioned MIUI gaming mode as well, which can give the performance a little bit of a boost if you need it, can block notifications, change your voice if you're into all that. Using this, I can change my voice so I sound like an actual man. Using this, I can change my voice so I sound like an actual man. Albeit a man who's probably on all kinds of police lists. As for the battery life, well, the Poco F5 Pro sports a 5,160 milliamp hour capacity cell. And that combined with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is generally a winning formula. 
This past week, I haven't run out of juice once before I've been tucked up with Teddy in bed, and that's with around five to six hours of screen on time, plus lots of audio streaming in the background. That said, I do tend to end most days with only around 10 to 20% battery life remaining, so not exactly a massive safety cushion there. That could improve, of course, if I continue to use the Poco F5 Pro for another week or two. Sometimes the battery just takes a little bit of time to settle. Luckily, it does charge a pretty bloody nipply as well if you do find yourself in dire straits. 67 watt wired charging, so I do tend to charge it in the mornings rather than sticking a cable in it all night long. And you've also got 30 watt wireless charging on the Poco F5 Pro, which is pretty rare for a mid-ranger, so great to see. Of course, one area where these mid-range Poco phones tend to be a bit hit and miss is the camera tech. So what you got here on the Poco F5 Pro is a 64 megapixel main shooter with optical image stabilization, backed by basic 8 megapixel ultra wide angle and 2 megapixel macro shooters. It's once again Xiaomi's standard camera app, so no surprises here. You got the likes of the AI mode, which you can activate at any point that will just analyze your subject and then tweak the settings to suit. So here it's recognized I'm shooting a human or almost human subject, the lovely Veronica. Now focus is fast to act and you've got the likes of eye tracking support as well. While the Poco F5 Pro doesn't quite hit those pixel highs at any time of day, it can produce some crispy shots with only a wee bit of care and attention, complete with bold bombastic colors. Besides a bit of obvious lens flaring in bright light, my day pics tended to be balanced and rarely oversaturated. The HDR chops are perfectly respectable, while Poco's portrait mode offers some rather dashing bokeh style action. The shutter speed is nice and nippy too, so no worries snapping live and breathing subjects even with the portrait mode active. Unless that is the lighting is on the soft side, in which case you might get some blur if your timing is pants. That night mode can pump out a well exposed shot though, as long as your subject as well as your hands are perfectly still. Even with optical image stabilization on board, it is easy to get blurry results. And as I mentioned before, you do have a pointless macro mode if you want it as well. And you've also got an ultra wide angle shooter, which is pretty bog standard, but it does the job if you want a slightly more dramatic angle or just want to fit more into frame. And plenty of other bonus modes as well. The aforementioned portrait mode and night mode. You can also capture images at full 64 megapixel resolution as well. Quite handy if you want to crop into a shot. And if you know your way around a camera and all the various settings, you do have a full on pro mode as well. There's no raw option here, but you can shoot at the full 64 megapixels again. And you've got all the other usual settings. If you want to shoot a bit of whole movie action, well, the good news is the Poco F5 Pro does actually support 8K resolution at 24 FPS. Otherwise, you can bump it down a bit to 4K res and shoot at either 30 or 60 FPS. And even at 8K levels, the footage isn't too jerky when you are panning the camera or carefully moving around. However, for most of my testing, I did keep the Poco F5 Pro at 4K level, and I was happy with what I saw and what I heard. Those visuals are sharp, and again you get bold colours, as long as the lighting isn't too crap. And audio is perfectly captured from all directions with a clear stereo effect, so your home movies will sound as good as they look. And lastly, the Poco F5 Pro serves up a 16 megapixel selfie shooter if you're into your Instas or whatever else kids might do these days. And yeah, this seems perfectly fine, capable enough whether you're shooting against a bright background, if you're in more ambient conditions, you've got the usual screen flash feature that's absolutely, utterly blinding, of course. No 8K option with the front facing selfie cam, of course. No 4K option either. It does top off at full HD at either 30 or 60 frames per second. Does an absolutely fine job of keeping you looking reasonably crisp on those video chats though. Did have a couple of little issues with the mic picking up my voice when I strayed a little bit further away from the phone during a Zoom call, but apart from that, all seemed fine. And that right there in a nutshell is what I reckon of the Poco F5 Pro after using it as my full-time smartphone for about a week. I've got to say, I really like it. The specs are fantastic at this sort of mid-range price point. The performance is brilliant. Battery life could be a little bit better, and I'm not exactly a massive fan of that design, as you might be able to tell. It does feel a bit plasticky and cheap, which is a real shame. But certainly, if you're after a premium media viewing experience, premium gaming, all that good stuff at a more affordable asking price, well, this will do the job. Anyway, I will be shooting a full side-by-side -side with the Poco F5 Pro and the regular Poco F5 so you can see what the difference is between the two, which one might be best for you. So if you don't want to miss that, please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everybody. Love you.